Hello there, welcome to this video. Let's get a general overview on the newest Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018 and all the tips to get started as a beginner. Leave us comments below to improve our future video guides on this software. Premiere Pro CC is one of the best video editing software to create your own customized videos and slideshows, full of outstanding effects, transitions, titles, and more. As with all Creative Cloud products, Premiere Pro is subscription-based only. Check our guide link in the video description to discover more about the other major products from Adobe Creative Cloud. When you open Premiere Pro, the welcome screen opens with several options, leading to guided pages and tutorials. Very useful if you start from a beginner level. To discover all the main features together, we will skip this page. After some time, the Start dialog box opens, with two sections on top. Use Learn to get additional tips and tutorials. And Work to start working on Premiere. On the left, select Recent to pick a recent project or choose CC files to start from Creative Cloud Files saved. At the bottom, use Open Project to browse for your own project. Or use New Project to start from a new blank project. Team projects are often used inside a team or a business environment. We won't see these in this beginner tutorial. When starting with a new project, choose a proper name above, where to save it under Location, and under General, set the project format to use. In particular, if you prefer to use seconds with time code or number of frames to measure time. When you click on OK, the whole Premiere Pro workspace opens with several windows, whose kind and position may change according to the tab selected above. In this video, we will just use the default editing workspace composed by video previews on the first half. Several useful windows in the bottom left corner and the project timeline at the bottom where you work and edit your media. In case you need to open other kinds of windows, just go to Window and then choose from the list. A Premiere Pro project is composed of several independent timeline structures called sequences, and each sequence contains several copies of your media called clips, which can be pictures, videos, audio, and pieces of text edited and placed in time properly. In this video, we will see how to create and work with a single sequence. To create a new sequence, use Ctrl and N to open the New Sequence dialog box in order to fix its main video and audio settings. Under Sequence Presets, you can pick a ready template or choose Settings above to fully customize the setup to use. With Editing Mode, you can choose the template to start from or use Custom to fully customize the sequence, such as its frame rate under Time Base, its size and width and height under Frame Size, and the sample rate for the sound files under audio. Once you are ready, just go to OK below. The new sequence will appear on your project timeline. At this point, you have to add your own media to start creating and editing your video. To import files, you can drag and drop them on the timeline, either from your computer folders or from the Media Browser window on the left. All the imported files plus the sequences of your project are all listed inside the project window. Here, if you double click on the small icon, you will get a direct preview of such media through the source window right above. This shows audio waveforms on sound clips and a visual preview on pictures and video frames. In case of videos with sound, you can choose what to see by using the buttons at the bottom. To play back all, use the player below. Set the preview quality on select playback resolution and save the current video frame shown as a snapshot by using export frame. Now let's see how to manage and use the project timeline. All the media files imported inside the timeline are shown as rectangles called clips with different colors, pink for pictures and titles, green for audio files, and blue for frames and audio from videos. All these are contained inside several rows, such as video tracks, indicated by a V letter plus a number, with visible clips inside, and audio tracks named with the letter A. 
with all clips regarding sound and speech. To move through time, use your mouse wheel. To zoom in and out around your pointer, just use your mouse wheel while holding Alt down. All clips also show a quick preview of their content. Sound files and sound from videos show their own audio waveform, one per stereo channel. Visual clips show several frame thumbnails. Once you have enlarged video tracks enough, you can do so by clicking and dragging their top edge. To play back the whole content of your timeline with all your modifications applied, you have to use the program window. This previews exactly the frame under the blue playhead from the timeline. If you click and drag it, you can easily check the project frame after frame, including its audio. To play back all, use the player instead. Now let's see how to edit the work with your clips by using the selection tool next to the timeline window. You can move a clip through time by clicking and dragging it within the same or another track. In case of videos with audio, both clips will be moved together. To make them independent, just right click on the clip and go to Unlink. Pay attention that Video Tracks fixes the order of visibility on all the visual clips that overlap it. All clips that stay on a higher video track are shown in front of all the other clips placed on lower video tracks. You can also move and edit multiple clips at the same time by selecting all of them first. If you click and drag on the timeline, you will select all the clips that touch the rectangular region created. At this point, all of them can be moved and modified in the same way. To deselect all, just click elsewhere. To cut and copy a selected clip, just use the Ctrl and X and Ctrl and C. You can cut clips to delete them quickly. Use Ctrl and V to paste the clip right after the blue playhead inside the timeline. Just make sure this does not overlap the other clips or these will be cut. If you make any mistake, you can use Ctrl and Z to undo. Or use the history window to go through your past actions made. In case you need to set the clip duration and time, you can either cut part of its content or change the speed rate used to play it back. You can shorten or stretch clips by simply approaching their edges and clicking and dragging them. Consider that this will modify the clip content in case this is a video or an audio file. If you don't want to change the clip content, you have to shorten or stretch the clip by acting on its speed rate by using the Rate Stretch tool. In this case, if you want to shorten the clip, this will be played faster, with a playback rate higher than 100%. If you stretch it, this will be played slower, with a playback rate lower than 100%. To split a clip in two or more independent pieces, enable the Razor tool and click directly on the clip. Let's see how to manage the content inside the video and the audio tracks. On both video and audio tracks, you have several buttons to manage their content. Inside video tracks, you can use the eye icon to hide or show their content inside. Or use the lock button to block any possible modifications on the clips until you unlock the track. The audio tracks have the lock button and also two other buttons. Mute disables the current track, muting all its clips inside. Solo enables the current track only, muting all the other ones. Whenever you need to delete or add new tracks, just right click on a vacant place and go to Add or Delete Track. Take a look at the decibel meter on the right. This sets the overall volume coming from your project, which should never reach red levels or this will be distorted. In case this happens, you can correct the volume from the master audio track at the very bottom. With Premiere Pro, you can also edit the properties of each clip, adding visual and audio effects to make them cooler. The Effect Controls window lists all the basic properties of the selected clip from the timeline. If it's a visual clip, you can fix position, scaling, rotation angle with its anchor point, 
and the clip transparency with opacity. Make sure to use the program preview to check the results of your new setup. If it's an audio clip, you can adjust its general volume with the volume or correct it on each of the stereo channels with the channel volume. Use Panner to equalize the stereo channels instead. Moreover, from the Effects window, you can browse for extra visual and audio effects that you can drag and drop on the interested clip. Then, added effects will be listed inside the Effects control window as a new property with all its settings you can change. You can reset any property or effect by using the Reset button on the right. You can also disable or enable each line by clicking on the FX icon on the left. Whenever you change the clip properties or add an extra effect, the clip will show a colored FX icon. With Premiere, you can also add text and titles by using the Type tool. With this tool enabled, click and drag directly on the program preview and start typing. Just make sure the red contour is sufficient for your text content. At this point, a new title clip is created on top of all the other clips, with the same basic properties seen for the visual clips under the Effects Control window. In addition, you will also get the title properties under Text. In order to fix the font family, Style, Size, Distribution, Fill Color, and any stroke or shadow effect. Consider the changes will be effective just if you have pieces of text selected. Moreover, if you click on the text with the selection tool, you can drag it to move it, use its blue points to scale it, and drag from outside its contour to rotate it. From the Effects window, you can also import video transitions, which are special effects to make clips appear and disappear. To add one, just drag and drop it on the edges of a clip or between two clips. You can also add audio transitions, which act like the audio clip volume instead. To change the transition setup and duration, just select it and use the Effect Controls window. Now let's see how to save and export your work. To save your project, go to File and then to Save As. To create a .prp proj file in order to save your whole Premiere project, including all its sequences, clips, and effect settings and placement. Whereas to extract the final video, you have to render it. First of all, select the sequence to be rendered, and then go to File, Export, and then to Media. The Export Settings panel shows a complete preview of your sequence on the left, and the rendering options chosen on the right. Here, fix the video format under Format and the Video Name and Destination folder under Output Name. To choose your own customized setup, choose a H.264 format on top and personalize all settings under the Video tab below, such as Resolution and Frame Rate. By default, these are set by the media files or source used but you can fix your own ones by unchecking the square on the right. The other source page allows you to crop the sequence in order to change its aspect ratio. In this case, remember to match the video resolution with the sequence one with the Match Source button. When you click on Export, Premiere will render the entire sequence timeline. If you want to render parts of it, just place the triangular marker at the bottom of the preview and select the part to render. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our channel for more amazing and free video guides for Adobe Creative Cloud products.